We are concerned with the very fundamental constitutional issue of whether or not the government of the United States can indeed make distinction between citizens on the basis of ancestry or national origin. World War II is a very difficult time. Uh, it goes without saying that this was a time of heightened suspicion. It was a time of immense injustices and all of these things were helped along by the actions of the U.S. government. Uh, Minyasui, of course, is the, uh, one of the attorneys, uh, one of three attorneys who fought uh, different exclusion orders during World War II. And his case went to the Supreme Court and he lost. He didn't do it for self-aggrandizement. He didn't do it um, for his ego. He, he didn't, you know, if you thought about, he didn't do it for publicity. I mean, he did it because he was a patriot and he believed in the Constitution and he believed in justice. I also believed in the Constitution and due process and, and justice, partially because my parents did not have that. They were not accused, they were not put on trial, they were not found guilty, they were just told to go. My mother was 19 and my father was 23, and you can imagine at that age, going someplace, taking only what you can carry, not knowing where you're gonna go, and not knowing for how long, and you're a US citizen. From my perspective today, it can be difficult to reconcile the fact that Minyasui was one of just three people out of over 120,000 others uh, who had the courage to stand up for what was right. That sort of courage um, and the fact that his courage is honored by this law school was a huge motivating factor for me in deciding this is the law school that's going to honor that history, honor that legacy, and will support me in doing the same. I read Korematsu versus United States in, in con law class, and I thought then that if there's anything that I could do to right uh, that wrong in terms of my parents and grandparents and all my relatives having been incarcerated, it would make these three years of torture, i.e. law school, worthwhile. <laughs> So that was when I first met him and I said, uh, I'm happy to help you with your case, uh, regardless of what any other lawyer says in Oregon. Then he said to me, I don't know if we're gonna win Peggy, but we're gonna give him hell. We're gonna go, we're gonna go the distance, we're gonna, and that's the kind of person he was. I mean, you had to be that kind of person to pursue it at 24, 25, and then 40 years later to say, I'm gonna reopen the case. Um, how many people, especially lawyers, are willing to take that big of a risk? If I could say something to Mr. Yasui today, um, I would have to say thank you. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your courage to stand up to an injustice. I want to do everything I can to uphold his legacy, to uphold his legacy in the highest way possible. That is to honor his principles of standing up for what you believe in. And in this case, of course, standing up for civil liberties, but more generally, standing up for your country. To uphold our system of justice in order to have democracy and the Constitution, people really need to step up and be vigilant about that. And he was that, he's a, he's a role model for that. Um, and so I think he'd be pleased and proud to uh, receive this award as, as a expression uh, of what he did. It is this notion that our country, though very flawed, has the potential to be a beacon of light in this world. And I truly believe that.